photography came about as a bit of an accident uh, while I was traveling to sketch and paint. I've spent many years traveling through Europe and Scandinavia sketching and painting, and I used to create maps uh, where I would have a little key and record visually where I had been and I would take little pictures just with a little snapshot camera. And on a trip to Iceland once, I was documenting where I would like to return and the photographs were so surreal that I just thought I need to just print these at a couple of feet and see what they look like. And they were so exciting that I just became interested in developing those and it just took me in a new direction. Um, I was taking a class in studio lighting, which being a landscape photographer, I had never really uh, explored very much because you're, you're, you're using the elements. And this was much more controlled lighting, very focused, very structured, you, you're, you're planning. And um, it was just, uh, it was an assignment where we used a singular focus lighting called Rembrandt lighting. It's a textbook kind of a thing. And it was just, uh, it was like a, a, a new door opening. It was totally exciting. It was one of those things where you really go, wow, this is just a totally new way of looking at this and working with people instead of the landscape is very different because usually you're battling the elements or the what, it's not really battling, but you know, you're considering the, the lighting, the moon, the stars, where you are in the lunar cycle and it's like the weather. It's painter. You yeah. have to go with what's changing around yeah. you. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And here there becomes a dynamic between you and the person you're photographing and that becomes the activity, that becomes the focus. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people sit down to have their portrait taken and you know, when they get to kind of remove themselves from the day and they're, they're focused on something that may be a little bit unusual lighting compared to a normal, um, you, know, you know, a normal portrait, they just, you know, like a little other element of their personality can come out. And it, it, was, it was really exciting to see this. Could it be really calm or really still? Even people that are normally very vivacious, you might see something that was very stern and, and, and true grit. And so that, this was exciting. Like every person is a different adventure. Have a very basic setup. My uh, my equipment is still very very minimal and simplistic. So I have one light source, and uh, I try to create a space or select a space for them where something about their personality uh, comes out in those elements. Maybe it's their office. Maybe it's in uh, a room where there are a lot of objects and books and and things that are maybe a little bit more reflective of them. And it's very little direction. Usually I focus on the elements of the face, their eyes particularly, and the way the light moves across their face. And then I leave the rest up to them, hoping that they're, you know, they get to have that space where they get to In this image, this is Mark, uh, the children's dad and he is in PR and advertising and he is the madman, madman sort of a person and sort of the caricature. And so I loved bringing out something that was using traditional lighting but in a very contemporary atmosphere and the juxtaposition of those things. I thought that was, those were really fantastic elements to kind of marry together. that leaves a lot of room for the sitter to kind of have their own, that, that other personality kind of come out. And some people smiled. I, I did kind of say, suggest some people that, you know, this didn't need to be like the smile, sit and smile kind of a portrait. That's really not, you know, it was, this was something that was a little bit more introspective. And, um, but most people just did that naturally. I didn't really need to give any direction like that. And that's better. Everyone that I have worked with has been a completely different experience. And 
It's really fantastic. Even people that I know really well kind of presented themselves in a way that really did seem like an alter ego and sometimes uh, really surprising. This is Marikita, our daughter. And this was the original setting that I was creating for him. I was setting up a chair and with the lighting and everything. And Marikita was so curious and she's, she's very hip to camera. I mean, she was 18 months old at the time, but she just hopped right up in the chair with these books. So it was really fantastic in this one, as well as in the image of Mark, because she is wearing a very, she's wearing a Spanish dress that looks kind of antiquated and she's in an old embroidered chair, but then she's reading these books that are current uh, children's books. So that was really kind of fun and, and not created. She really, she really did that herself with this very straightforward expression on her face. And her brother did the same thing. He hopped right up in the chair because she got in the chair. So of course he wanted to get in the chair. And, and but he just sort of had this kind of a slinky, slouched, uh, relaxed look. And neither of them were posed. They really just did that. They really did this themselves. So I think it's really interesting because the adults really did the same thing. You, you, they sit in a chair, they have an object or they're in their environment and you don't really have to um, direct them very much. I'm really focused on the lighting when I'm shooting their images and, and what we're highlighting in their environment. But the way that they, what the, the way they come across and their persona is really natural to them. That's really of their own accord. Family, we have a very big family. I'm very blessed to have a huge family. And we like to celebrate things. And I think it's really fantastic when you can go beyond your immediate family and also include people and who are a part of your daily life, who are meaningful and that uh, become family just in their proximity and experiencing things with your family, holidays and just daily life. I think it's really special in this time where people have experienced such isolation to remember how important it is. So, uh, especially in this uh, uh, body of work that started really uh, to be developed in the time of, of COVID and, and everyone isolating, um, it really was about who you were spending your time with every day. And it's not because you're choosing them because you think, oh, I like them and or I don't like them. They're people that are in your daily life. Mm -hmm. And we were, you know, with a, a small section of the family and uh, it was it was really wonderful because we had a great time uh, together. And but they had the, they had to sit for me a few times. I tried to tell them we may do this again, but a couple of them had to sit for portraits three or four times because <laughs> I had gone through everyone. And it was very good practice. And um, but the idea that you. Uh, have people in your life that that you consider family beyond your um, immediate family. We we have a we've always had a tradition in our family of uh, what we called an orphan Christmas. Christmas night was to include people who may not have a family here, or maybe they've just moved to Houston. They don't know a lot of people, and so we would always have like an eclectic group of people. And uh, it was always really fantastic uh, because, you know, you're sharing something that could be, you know, otherwise not such a great time on your own. And, and here you are, you're coming into this, you know, crazy chaotic house as ours always was because we are a large number of people. And um, people say, you know, we're a built-in cocktail party. <laughs> and um, so it's just nice to include in, in other people. Working on a large scale in a public space like the airport, where you are, um, you're creating something that's going to have a lot of traffic, and then working on something on a scale like this, um, what was really wonderful about both, working both ways, is both involve 
teamwork and both involve the interaction of the people that you're working with. So that I've really loved in both. And then um, there are also the considerations of how people will experience those pieces. Like, uh, for instance, the piece that I did for uh, Southwest Airlines in Hobby Airport was designed to be a calming atmosphere. They actually requested that because travelers feel stress. And so they want something that's going to be soothing. So you really have that in mind when you're designing um, the piece. And then in something like this, it's much more intimate and one-on-one, -on -one, and you want to create an experience where you feel like you're experiencing an alter ego of a person or maybe something that they don't normally reveal in their daily life. I'm going to keep on with this series and um, I have a huge family. So uh, my immediate list of people to include in this series is about 60 people. So it's going to just be something that I've, I feel is going to be a cumulative and I'm just going to keep um, working on it. It felt a little um, uh, strange to to not have every single person in the family uh, in the exhibition but this I sort of feel like this is a glimpse of of this series as it is right now and I'm really looking forward to what I can do um, with the images when they're collected as the full uh, full immediate family which is really quite numerous <laughs>